Uh, this is a British poem. Uh, it was done in 1932, I think, but um, it's called The Lion and Albert. There's a famous seaside place called Blackpool that's noted for fresh air and fun. And Mr. and Mrs. Ramsbottom went there with young Albert, their son. A grand little lad is young Albert, all dressed in his best, quite a swell, with a stick, with an horse's head handle, the finest that Woolworths could sell. They didn't think much to the ocean. The waves, they was fiddling and small, and there was no wrecks and nobody drowned, in fact, nothing to laugh at at all. So, seeking for further amusement, they paid and went into the zoo, where there are lions and tigers and camels, and old ale and sandwiches, too. There were one great big lion called Wallace. His nose was all covered with scars. He lay in a somnolent posture with the side of his face to the bars. Now Albert had heard about lions, how they was ferocious and wild, and to see Wallace lying so peaceful, it didn't seem right to the child. So straightway the brave little fella, not showing a morsel of fear, took his stick with his horse's head handle and shoved it in Wallace's ear. You could see it that the lion didn't like it, for giving a kind of a roll, he pulled Albert inside the cage with him and swallowed the little lad all. Then Pa, who had seen the occurrence and, and didn't know what to do next, said, Mother, you're on lions at Albert. And Mother said, Woo, I am vexed. And Mr. and Mrs. Ramsbottom, quite rightly, when all said and done, complained to the animal keeper that the lion had eaten their son. Well, the keeper were quite nice about it. He said, what a nasty mishap. Are you sure that it's your boy he's eaten? Pa says, am I sure? Here's his cap. The manager had to be sent for, and he came and said, what's to do? Pa said, yon lion's at Albert, and him and his Sunday clothes, too. Then mother said, right, right there, young feller. I think it's a shame and a sin for a lion to go and eat Albert and after we'd paid to come in. The manager wanted no trouble. He took out his purse right away, saying how much to settle the matter. And Pa says, oh, what do you usually pay? But mother had turned a bit awkward when she thought where her Albert had gone. She said, no, someone's got to be summonsed, so that was decided upon. Then off they went to the police station in, <clears throat> in front of the magistrate chap. They told him what happened to Albert and proved it by showing his cap. The magistrate gave his opinion that no one was really to blame, and said that he hoped the Ramps Bottoms would have further sons to their name. But at that, Mother prop got proper blazing. And thank you, sir, kindly, said she. What? S waste all our lives raising children to feed ruddy lions, not me. You've heard our young Albert Ramsbottom in the zoo up at Blackpool one year, with a stick with an horse's head handle gave a lion a poke in the ear. The name of the lion was Wallace. The poke in the ear made him wild. And before you could say, Bob's your uncle, he'd open he'd swallowed the child. He was sorry the moment he'd done it. With children, he'd always been chums. And besides, he'd no teeth in his muzzle. He couldn't chew Albert on gums. He could feel the lad moving inside him as he lay on his bed of dried ferns. And it might have been the little lad's birthday. 
he wished him such happy returns. But Albert kept with kicking and fighting till Wallace arose feeling bad and felt it were time that he started to stage a come back for the lad. So with his head down in a corner and his front paws, he started to walk. He coughed and he sneezed and he gargled till Albert shot out like a cork. Old Wallace felt better directly and his figure once more became lean. But the only difference with Albert was that his face and his hands came out clean. Said Ma, it just goes for to show you that the future is never revealed. If I'd known thought we were going to lose him, I'd have not had his boots show, sold and healed. Let's look at the bright side, said Father. What can't be helped? must be endured, every cloud has a silvery lining, and we did have young Albert insured. A knock at the door came that moment, as father these kind words did speak, twas the fat man from the Prudential, he had called for the tuppence per person per week. When father saw, saw who had been knocking, he laughed and he left, kept laughing so, that the young man said, What's there to laugh at? And Pa said, You'll laugh and awe when you know. Excuse him for laughing, said Mother, but really things happen so strange. Our Albert's been hit by a lion, and you got to pay us for a change. Said the young fellow from the Prudential, Now, come, come, let's understand this. You don't mean to say that you've lost him. Oh, we know where he is. When the young man had heard all the details, a bag from his pocket he drew and paid them with interest and bonus the sum of nine pound four and two. Pa scarce got his hands on the money when the face at the window they see and mother said, Oh, look, it's Albert. Father says, I oh, it would be. Young Albert came in all excited and started his story to give and Pa says, I'll never trust lions again, not as long as I live. The young fellow from the Prudential to pick up the money began and Father says, hey, just one moment, don't be an hurry, young man. Then giving young Albert a shilling, he said, here, pop off back to the zoo. Take your stick with his horses and handle and see what the liar tigers could do. Hello, today is Monday, May the 13th, and we're happy to start our week with you. I am Jan McGee, and I'm Jean Horensky, and we're here for this week's announcements. Today, Monday the 13th at 10 a.m. in Seoul Conference Center, is a drum circle with Sam. And Jean, do you like bingo? I do. Well, it's your lucky day today because it's another bingo day on campus. The Residents Association is sponsoring bingo with all cash prizes this afternoon in the Shoal Conference Center. Bingo will start promptly at 1 o'clock. The cost is $15, which includes a six-card sheet, drinks, and snacks. Wow, that's a great buy. It is. And the bingo has uh, limited seating and is for passive residents only, so be sure to come early with your friends. And remember, today it starts at 1 o'clock. Okay, and men, here's a reminder for you. Today, Monday, May the 13th, is Men's Night Out in Shoal Conference Center for all of you who have registered. The evening will include dinner and a special guest speaker, Mr. David Fenoletto, the president and CEO of Lutheran Senior Life. Social hour will begin at 5 p.m. and dinner will begin at 5.30. That sounds like fun. May is a better hearing and speech month, so let's celebrate communications across the lifespan. 
Be sure to thank a therapist today. And if you like Vintage Deb, she will share her singing with us on Tuesday, May the 14th in Shoal Conference Center at 1 o'clock. That sounds like fun. I know. Kathy Reed on Wednesday, May the 15th, is hosting a community life meeting at 2 o'clock in the Wittenberg Community Room. Light refreshments will be served. At the meeting, new residents and present residents are invited to share their thoughts and ideas on programs, trips, and community events, and much more. This is a time to plan your fun times. Are you wanting to try a fun dining experience? That like sounds like a good thing, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Why don't you think about going to Wittenberg on display on Wednesday, May the 15th for a pasta action station featuring Chef Ryle and sous chef Marie. If you're interested, call extension 3590 for reservations. Don't forget that the 430 seating is open to Wittenberg residents only, and the 530 seating is open to all other independent living residents. Wittenberg on display is always a great time. Patricia Reveal presents a recital of her piano and voice students this Wednesday, May the 15th at 6 o'clock in the Shoal Conference Center. And if you love pancakes, a pancake breakfast is being held on Thursday, May the 16th from 9.30 till 11 in the Wittenberg Activity Room. The cost is $3 a person. And for all of you who love music, come listen to the Sounds of Pittsburgh Chorus on Friday, May 17th at 1 o'clock in Shoal. And if you are a traveler and like to travel the world, the DVD series will be held on Friday, May the 17th at three o'clock in the Wittenberg Activity Room. And this is one I don't want to miss. Ring Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. the premier handbell choir in Pittsburgh will, per will be performing in Seaman Memorial Chapel at three o'clock, Saturday, May the 18th. And all are welcome to join in the 1030 Sunday worship service in Seaman Memorial Chapel. If you are unable to attend in person, don't forget that you can also watch the broadcast live on Channel 900. The scripture readings will be listed on the 900 channel. A Catholic communion service is held on Thursdays at 1030 in the Seaman Memorial Chapel. Did you know that when you purchase items from the gift shop, it builds funds through the auxiliary that are used to improve our campus? The gift shop located in the Abundant Life Center lobby is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 4. And please stop in the gift shop to see the wide variety of essentials and gifts and even candy available to you. And on Monday, May the 20th, a week from today, please plan to attend the Residents Association meeting. This important meeting will include the election of new officers, and our on-the-campus update by Laura Roy. The meeting will be in Shoal. Social time begins at 2.30, and the official meeting begins at 3 o'clock. Ambassadors are encouraged to bring their new residents at 2.30 so we all can get to know them and mingle and talk. And immediately following the meeting, please plan to stay for a happy hour in the area outside the creamery. Just bring your own drinks and have fun mingling with your friends and neighbors. We're happy, too, to bring you the upcoming Aspire wellness trips and encourage you to think about enjoying them with a friend or two. On June the 11th, the Frick collections of Vermeer, Manet, and Rembrandt. Bus pickup will be at 10 a.m. On June 22nd, Titanic, the musical at Lincoln Park. And on June the 26th, afternoon tea at the Johnson House. That's lovely. Please call Brian in the fitness center for more information and remember to complete a class registration form in the fitness center to sign up. The regular hours for the gently used shop are Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9.30 to 3.30 p.m. 
And by the way, they've got so many nice things there. Be sure and stop in. And always take time to nourish your spirit with Pastor Frida on Channel 900 at 7 a.m., 9 a.m., noon, 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. every Thursday. Dale Krasinski will be sharing his music with us on Wednesday, May 22nd at 1 o'clock in the Shoal Conference Center. He always attracts a large crowd here. And if you love covered dish, the Wittenberg is having a covered dish get-together Thursday, May the 23rd at noon. You can bring any type of covered dish you like. Tea sandwiches will be provided. But you must sign up by calling Arlene Mawinney at 724-452-3681. Can you knit or crochet? <laughs> On Busy Hands Group could use you to help make things for our charity and for interested parties. Just show up and, and come and we will be glad to help you. We like to work with everybody. We usually sit there and do a lot of talking. Though. Oh, okay. And we've also expanded into doing a lot of sewing projects as well. So come and join us. We have a watch party for season four of The Chosen for all of you who have enjoyed that. It's being held at St. Ferdinand's Church. If you're interested in going, contact Brian in the Fitness Center at extension 3456. And a new session on the Great Courses DVD series on world religions begins this month. This six-part series will focus on Mormon traditions and will run on Mondays at 1 o'clock in the Music Room from May the 20th through June the 24th. And if it's uh, nice, on uh, May the 25th, which is Saturday at 2 o'clock, come out to the Centennial Gardens and enjoy a Dixieland band. Rick Bruning will be here on Wednesday, May the 29th at 1 o'clock in the Shoal Conference Center. And on May the, Wednesday, May 29th at 2.30 in Wittenberg Activity Room, there will be a wine and cheese social. Come and join your friends for just a relaxing social time before dinner. Non-alcoholic refreshments will be available. Entertainer Pat Sepik will be in Shoal Conference Center on Friday, May the 31st at 6 o'clock to talk about the golden age of radio. And don't forget, our Veterans Breakfast is held the third Tuesday of each month at 10 a.m. in the Barron's Inn. All veterans are invited. The Abundant Life Men's Fellowship Ministry meets the second Friday of every month in the game room at 2.30. The purpose of this group is to cultivate a space for men to learn, about, to learn and be with other men and to provide support, ministry, and fellowship for one another. This ministry is open to men from our passive community and also those from the surrounding communities. So mark your calendar and plan to join in, in on the second Friday of each month. If you need more information, just call Al Stoker at 724-630-5371. Guess what, everyone? Spring is here. So it's a great time to enhance your wellness journey with personal training. This great opportunity will start on June the 1st. Resident members and Aspire Wellness members can access eight 30-minute sessions for just $120. The cost for community members is $140. If you are interested, you can call or visit the fitness center, talk to a staff member to schedule your personal training sessions. The phone number for the fitness center is 724-452-3456. Memorial Day is approaching. Plan to kick off the summer season with a grilled buffet in the bistro on Monday, May the 27th from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. The buffet is just $15 per person. Oh, that sounds good, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Ready for a hot dog. I am too. And by the way, don't forget that the telephone number to reach Amber Magnus in dining services has changed. 
Her direct dial number is 724-452-3534. The National Alliance on Mental Health Illness of Butler County, NAMI, hosts a family support group in the Beatitudes Room in the Abundant Life Center on the second Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. Details are in the Life and Times. And those of you that are bookworms, don't forget that the Passive and Book Club will take a break for the summer and then resume in September. If you have any questions, please reach out to Carolyn at 724-473-8279 or Elaine at 814-758-0110. Jean, I wonder what this is going to be. The Passive Community Olympics. They'll be taking place on July oh. the 12th. I wonder what they're going to want us to do. I know. <laughs> More details will follow them in the upcoming weeks. And if you enjoy watching Monday Morning Madness, think about taking a turn reading the announcements with a friend or a neighbor. It's really fun. Just talk to Owen Miller in Media Services or put your name on the sign-up sheet on his door. It's easy and it's lots of fun to do. And finally, thank you very much for turning into this broadcast. You can find us on channel 900 every Monday at, no, at 7, 9, noon, 6, and 10 p.m. Please tell your neighbors about the broadcast. It's an easy way to hear the upcoming activities and events. You can also watch the broadcast any day at any time on our Aspire Wellness YouTube channel. When you are on YouTube, simply search the words Aspire Wellness to find us. And remember to continue watching Channel 900 throughout the week for daily updates, cancellations, additional details, and new announcements. It's been a good day. Yes, it is. Have a great week, everyone. Hi, I'm Pastor Frida, pastor of Seaman Memorial Lutheran Church and chaplain at Pacific Community. A reading from 1 Timothy. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in Him for eternal life. A few years ago, my husband Dave and I were blessed to go on vacation to Disney World. To be sure, this was a wonderful trip and we had a fantastic time. But it also gave each of us a lesson in patience. We learned to have patience while navigating our way through large crowds and waiting in long lines to go on the rides or see the shows in the different parks. We learned to be patient while waiting to be seated at the different restaurants we went to. However, the greatest lesson in patience came during our trip home. You see, there were bad storms in Orlando, so our flight to Memphis was delayed. Finally, we were able to take off from Orlando and head to Memphis. But, because of the delay in Orlando, our layover time that would allow us to get to our gate in Memphis had completely disappeared. And we had to literally almost run to get to our gate. When we finally arrived at the gate and gave thanks that we hadn't missed our flight, the person at the counter told us that our flight to St. Louis 
had been delayed. Ugh. As if that weren't frustrating enough, after the plane arrived, there was an announcement saying that our plane was in a mechanical hold and they had no idea how long it would last. <laughs> we were wondering if we would ever get back home. Fortunately, the flight was only delayed for a short while. It's easy to become impatient with people and situations that happen in our lives. Sometimes we become impatient when the computer doesn't work quickly enough with other drivers on the road, even with our friends and neighbors or people who have different beliefs than our own. Sometimes we get impatient when the coffee doesn't brew fast enough in the morning. We may become impatient when we are no longer able to do things we used to do or do things as quickly and easily as we would like. Sometimes we need some type of therapy to regain our strength before we can return home. And it can't come quickly enough. These can be very difficult lessons in patience. Sometimes we get impatient with God, that God isn't answering our prayers or solving a situation as quickly as we would like. These are just a few of the things in life that might cause us to lose our patience. When I find myself losing patience with other people or situations, I can't help but think how grateful I am Choices we do. I can almost picture God shaking his head, saying, You don't really want to do that? Or why in the world are you making that decision? Or when I do not follow the model of love Jesus set for us, and I don't treat others the way I want to be treated. God is still patient with us when I struggle to follow His guidance or ignore opportunities to reach out and help others. The world we live in encourages us to seek instant gratification we want what we want, when we want, and how we want. Most times, we don't want to wait for anything. Patience is not something that comes easy for many of us. Fortunately, God shows great patience with us as we grow in our faith, striving to bring the light and love of Christ into the world. Peace 